of Education Secretary Betsy DeVos and notorious founder of the mercenary company once called Blackwater. After Blackwater's involvement in killings of Iraqi civilians brought public scrutiny, Prince rebranded the company under different names and finally sold it off, relocating to the United Arab Emirates, where he got close to the ruling family and began a new venture, Frontier Services Group, which marketed its security services to foreign states. Then in 2016, he pops up hanging around Trump world. During the transition after Trump was elected, uh, Prince was part of an effort to set up a meeting, a meeting that actually happened with a Russian fund manager in the Seychelles, which he has testified about to the House Intelligence Committee. What the meeting was for, kind of unclear. There was also a strange meeting during the campaign at Trump Tower that seems to have been forgotten about. As the New York Times first reported three months before the election, Donald Trump Jr. met with a Gulf state emissary who was offering to help Donald Trump win the election. Eric Prince, the private security contractor, former head of Blackwater, arranged the meeting, which took place August 3rd, 2016, in Trump Tower. Now, apparently Prince didn't tell the House Intel Committee about that meeting in Trump Tower during the campaign. And he was asked about his omission by Mehdi Hassan on Al Jazeera's English show, Head to Head. In November 2017, you told Congress under oath that you played, quote, no official or really unofficial role in the Trump campaign. What you didn't tell Congress is that on August 3rd, 2016, uh, you were at a meeting during the campaign at Trump Tower with Don Jr., Trump's son, with Stephen Miller, then a campaign advisor to Trump, with George Nader, a former Blackwater colleague of yours who acts as a back channel to the Saudis, the Emiratis. He also happens to be a convicted pedophile. And also Joel Zamel, an Israeli expert on social media manipulation. How come you didn't mention that meeting to Congress, given it's so relevant to their investigation? Uh, I did. As part of the part of the investigations, I certainly uh, disclosed any uh, any meetings. The very very not few the, I had. Not in the congressional testimony you gave to the House. We went through it. You didn't mention anything about August 2016 meeting in Trump Tower. I they did. specifically asked you what context you have, and you didn't answer that. Uh, I don't believe I was asked that question. You were asked whether any communic formal communications or contact with the campaign. You said apart from writing papers, putting up yard signs, no. That's what you said. I've got the transcript of the conversation here. Sure. I mean, I might have been, uh, I, I think I was at Trump headquarters or the campaign headquarters. Trump maybe, Tower, uh, August 3rd, 2016. You, possible. an Israeli dude, a back channel to the Emiratis and the Saudis, Don Jr., we're Stephen there, Miller. We're there to talk about Iran policy. Are you there to talk about Iran policy? Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's something important to disclose to the House Intelligence Committee while you're under oath? You did. You didn't. We just went through the testimony. There's no mention of the Trump Tower meeting in August 2016. Why not? I don't know if they got the transcript wrong. They got the transcript wrong. So if we go, I, I, I don't know. I remember. I remember uh, certainly just. I mean, this is a problem for you because we know that Robert Mueller. He hasn't been able to establish collusion yet, but he has got a lot of guys for lying to the authorities and not telling the whole truth. Is that a problem now? That even if you accidentally didn't tell them, that could come back and haunt you. I fully cooperated. And I haven't heard anybody. I haven't heard from anybody in more than nine months. House Intel Chair Adam Schiff responds to that, and I'll talk with Mehdi Hassan himself right after the break. Don't go anywhere.